sparkled the Duchess of Shallow. As her Hollywood dreams continue to crash and burn, Megan is reviving the one thing she thinks in her life is absolutely perfect and worked best for her the first time and helped her and Harry connect and show their true selves to each other. And that is Instagram. Oh yes, oh yes. Meghan Markle apparently thinks that her Instagram profile is gonna be so big, so huge, that every single post she does that is sponsored in any way is gonna get a million dollars. And not only that, we also have her mom showing up at a Hollywood function with the Kardashians. You could say the queens, the empresses of getting paid per post. However, I think Meghan is way overshooting herself here like everything else. And I think it really reveals at the end of the day who Meghan Markle really is. She is a shallow person. Everything about her life is Instagram. She wants that Instagram aesthetic. But that Instagram aesthetic isn't reality. And when you construct your entire life around that Instagram facade, at some point it will crumble because it's a fake. It's not a mirror. It's a reflection of what you want life to be and not what it really is. And so we will discuss a little bit about this today, including the Royals going to Balmoral. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany and I provide compelling royal commentary to you all. But the latest news, sometimes a little bit of drama going on behind the scenes. I also have a weekly newsletter. I have a fashion channel and I also have a membership. So if you're interested in getting more behind the scenes things, especially next month, I'll be on my way to Europe. I will be touring are going to at least five countries, I want to say. No, six. Six. So it's going to be a very, very jam-packed couple of days for me, or a couple of weeks. I am super excited and I can't wait to take you guys along. Obviously, I'll be doing other videos as well, but I'll be sharing some special content with my members as well. Well, and we do have the royal family have all gathered, sans Harry and Meghan, who are not real royals anymore, but let's just say that anyways, have gathered at Balmoral in part two conclude the summer holidays and also to remember Her Majesty the Queen. We saw Catherine and William going to the church service this morning. And then what was rather odd is that it was William driving Catherine and Prince Andrew back to Balmoral. That was a little odd, got people's eyebrows raised a little bit. However, I will say to start off, just blanket statement, Andrew has not been convicted of anything and he has stayed behind the scenes. Yes, he's drawn his family well into dis disrepute. But at the same time, he's also done a great, great job of just keeping silent for the most part. Yes, we hear things here and there about what he's planning to do, what he wants to do, but he's also biding his time trying to feel things out, and I will give him props there. Unfortunately, the guy, he's in his mid-60s. He would literally have to create a whole new career now since he's lost his royal role, and that's not really easy for anybody, especially a guy who was as spoiled as Andrew was by his mother. So, Andrew very much has this difficult role to fill. And I will say though that he has done a much better job than Harry. And I think actually the Royals are very, very smart here in this instance. Because what it says is that, yes, even if you draw the family into disrepute, even if you do some things that are just like, oh, why did you do that, Andrew? That was so terrible, made us look bad, the family look bad, all these sorts of things. At the end of the day, we're still family. We still spend family time together. Yes, Andrew is not at official functions anymore, but he's still considered a member of the family, which I think goes to the broader narrative that the Royals can spin regards to Harry and Meghan is that you can have a role here as a family member, but you're the ones who choose not to. You're the ones who choose to do your own thing and then scoff at us for trying to, let's say, pull Andrew into here a little bit because of course the Harry and Meghan stands go, well, Andrew is there. What is he doing there? Harry and Meghan aren't invited back in the same way and they have Catherine and William with Andrew. And it's like, but, but Andrew has kept his mouth shut. He hasn't publicly shared the dirty laundry about his family, tried to destroy his brother, tried to destroy the throne. Yes, he made some catastrophically stupid decisions. Yes, he did. Some of them might have even been criminal. You don't have any concrete evidence of that and he has never been convicted. But, but I will give him props for keeping his mouth shut and going away in quiet dignity for the most part. He still may pop up there, but he's trying to go away quietly for the most part. Harry and Meghan though, not so much. Not by any stretch of the imagination are those two gonna go away quietly, especially Meghan Markle. Cause Meghan Markle was one of one thing all of her life. And I've always said that she just wanted Hollywood fame and fortune. That is all that woman has ever wanted in her whole life. And she kind of sort of got it. And then she kind of sort of didn't. Because what happened is at some point the rubber meets the road. Meghan Markle 
she had a couple of acting roles. She managed to marry into the royal family, but she came back and she was a bit of a flop because at the end of the day, Meghan was always the flop. She was never going to be this huge star. She doesn't have the charisma. She's a very vain, vapid, and shallow person. And she doesn't have the talent to be a great actress. The thing is, if Meghan Markle wanted to be a great actress, that would require talent that required hard work, that required energy, that required getting negative feedback, which Meghan Markle does not like. The woman does not like any sort of negative feedback. And if you're in Hollywood, that's all you get. But Meghan Markle, even though she got the negative feedback, she's one of those people, I think, who didn't learn from it and said she went, oh, that person, they're racist. That person's sexist. That person doesn't understand me. That was Meghan Markle. She didn't take the negative feedback and transform it into something else. No, no, no. She took the negative feedback, thought they were idiots, and then just went on her merry way. And oh my gosh, well, wouldn't you know it? She never succeeded. Maybe if she had taken some of that advice at the beginning of her career, she might have succeeded. So now she's going back to the tired and true thing that she was always meant to do, be an Instagram influencer. Yep. Yep. Hollywood, fame, and fortune having $100 million contracts and everything. And that woman at the end of the day is still going to be an Instagram influencer. Like with all the money and resources that that's the best she can do. Like with that amount of money, guys, Royal News Network would be transformed. I could hire a team. I could have people to edit and research and then I could present and then I have more time to do other things. But right now I have to do all everything at once. I don't have the advantage of this huge team and Meghan Markle still can't function. She still can't produce product. I'm like, it's not that hard. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It requires drive though, determination, taking time out of your life to do something you don't really want to do. And I, going back to school now, I'm going to have to try to read as many things as I can to write an annotated bibliography, which is a long thing. You have to do like a paragraph on each thing. It's long. It's arduous. I hate citations. I will tell you this right now. I hate them to death. But why do I do it? Because I do love this channel. I do want this platform to grow. And guess what? Hard work usually, oftentimes, not always, results in positive things. Things change, things grow. I've seen this business grow. I started it in March, 2022. That was a long time ago. And I have 127,000 subscribers. Most people sometimes upload videos for years without ever reaching a thousand subscribers. That's crazy. Now, sometimes it's, it's luck, it's charisma, it's all these sorts of things that come together. But at the same time, there is a hard work determination behind it. I went into this channel automatically going, I want this to be a huge success. That means I have to sacrifice a lot to make it work. But Meghan Markle's not a hard work kind of girl. She's very much an Instagram aesthetic girl. Now, I will say on the face of it, a lot of influencers do work very, very hard. But Meghan Markle's not one of those people. She wants to take a picture. She wants to tell somebody what the caption is, have them write it, she approves it, then it goes up. And that's all she wants to do. Meghan Markle wants to do as few things as possible in order to get the greatest reward. And oftentimes, that's not really what works at the end of the day. It's not. The Kardashians, you could even say, yes, they get upwards of $2 million sometimes, or close to $2 million per Instagram post. Can you imagine a million dollars plus for one single Instagram post? But how did they get there? They worked all really, really hard. You can say what you want about the Kardashians, but when they were first starting out, they did every interview. They were very professional. They did basically anything that came on their plate as they grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And now they're this huge, massive, global, international brand. Meghan Markle, though, can never, ever reach those pinnacles. And so I did a little bit of research looking at people who get millions of dollars per Instagram post. So the Instagram account that gets the most per post, so this is upwards of almost $2 million, or I think over $2 million, is Cristiano Romano. He is the soccer player from... Madrid, he currently lives in the Middle East somewhere, I think now, or maybe he's from Portugal originally, but he played for Real Madrid. Anyways, so he has upwards of 600 million followers. So yes, he gets two plus million people per post. And then you have the Jenners, most of them get 1.8, 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, in there, Kylie gets the highest, I think hers was 1.8, and Kendall was the lowest in the top 10, and she gets like 1.2, I think. Chloe's in there, Kim Kardashian's in there, and Kourtney Kardashian gets more like 900,000 range, but Kourtney doesn't like to work quite as much as her sisters, and she's been a little bit more difficult than her sisters in a lot of respects. So, because of that, she doesn't make quite as much as they do. Totally get it. 
So why on the earth is WME, which is Meghan Markle's PR arm, all these sorts of things, telling the world she's gonna get a million dollars per post when her rinky dink Instagram account that she has right now only has 80 some odd thousand on it. Now granted, we don't know for sure for positive that is Megan's Instagram account, but that's been floated a lot. So I think there's a lot of credence to it. It's just Megan. She has 80,000 subscribers at her peak before she had to shut down her Instagram account before marrying into the royal family. She had about 3 million subscribers <laughs> or 3 million followers. So why in the world does she think now she's going to get hit a hundred million and be getting millions of dollars for each post? That's like, that's, that's fanciful. That's delusional. She's not going to reach the pinnacles of the Kardashians. Part of the problem is, is that she doesn't want to let anybody into her life. And so people think she lacks authenticity. We heard this in the People Magazine article series, that she lacked authenticity, that people couldn't connect with her and that her views went down every week. So why in the world is this woman and WME floating around that she's going to get a million dollars per post? Well, the reason is, She's not getting offers of a million dollars per post. I imagine they have this whole slew, this whole series of things wrapped around this Instagram launch. It'll be a huge thing. They'll have the TIG again, which is an awful name. I hate it so much. And so many other things all together to have this huge, massive launch for Meghan Markle. 12.0. So they're working on all these things. So they're floating around this idea that she's going to get a million dollars per post, hoping that people say, oh, well, she's going to get a million dollars. We're going to give her a million dollars and nobody's biting. And so they're like, well, maybe if we tell people, maybe we'll get in. I don't think it'll happen. And again, it's just a lunatic theory on the face of it that if you tell people somebody's going to make a million dollars per post, that magically a million dollars in, in asking is going to come back to you. Now that would work perhaps with a more of an unknown quality with perhaps a maverick edge to it. Some people are like, you know what? I see that person and yes, this might be a foolish bet, but I think that'll really take off. But Meghan Markle's not that. She is a very, very well-known quantity. She's a very, very well-known person. People either like her or they hate her. Those are the two distinct camp. There's, there's some people in the middle who are like, eh, don't really care either way. But people either love her or they loathe her. And there's more on the loathe side than there is on the love side. So how in the world is this woman going to generate million dollars per post? Because the thing is to get a million dollars per post, that means that you sharing something means that people react and they purchase. I don't think that's the case with Megan. I don't, I don't think it's a case where if you just show it, millions upon millions of people are going to buy that product. I don't think that exists for Megan. And so this idea that she's gonna do that, I think is just plain silly. It's just silliness to think that she's gonna get a million dollars per post. And once again, what's so foolish about all this is so much like when they were talking about Harry and Megan's entertainment empire. They're gonna be worth a billion dollars. They're gonna have a billion dollar entertainment empire. And what happened? Nothing. They lost Spotify. They're probably on the cusp of losing Netflix unless Harry's thing does exceptionally well. Harry's Heart of Invictus. We also had their book. Megan's did poorly. Harry's did well, but Harry's was always going to do well. And again, their first Netflix series was always going to do well because it's riffing off the royal family. So there is this huge divide between what is actually going to be successful for Harry and Megan and what actually translates. And everything that's successful for Harry and Megan thus far has traded off their royal connections. With this Instagram thing, Megan can't really do that. And she has to have this authenticity to go along with it. She can't have this carefully manufactured, curated image that she wants to because Megan stupidly decided that because everybody believed the Instagram veneer that she put out there to begin with that, Oh, I'll just marry Prince Harry and that vision will continue. Well, what happened was that that vision of herself hit reality and people dug in and they didn't believe things and she came off as inauthentic and she didn't know what to do. And she's just constantly trying to recapture that magic that she saw when she was an Instagram influencer. That's what Megan Markle is all about. Recapturing that initial magic because she thinks if she can recapture it, her and Harry's fortunes will be reversed. Now granted, again, this might be fairly successful, but it's a massive, massive step down from who Megan could have been. And just an interesting aspect as well. When Harry and Meghan first launched their Instagram account, Sussex Royal, it was one of the fastest accounts to get to 1 million. It held the record 
for a very, very, very short period of time. I was almost immediately beaten by Jennifer Aniston. And so even though Harry and Meghan, yes, they were able to capture a million subscribers in 24 hours or a million followers on their Instagram, they were immediately beaten by a higher ranking celebrity. At the end of the day, I don't know if Harry and Meghan can hit or surpass even Catherine and William's Instagram account. That would require Megan to change a lot about herself and how she presents herself to the world. Because unfortunately, beyond the pedantic, beyond the average Instagram influencer thing to offer, what else do they have? They don't have anything else. People, we enjoy following Instagram influencers. I follow some, they're fun, they're interesting. I, I, I have a hard time when they get too selly and everything's a sale. That's what I have a hard time with. But they're really good at that and that is their job. They don't really have, oftentimes, except for fashion and finding deals and stuff, too much else to offer really. And so they do hit usually the one to maybe five million at the most views and don't usually always surpass that. Some people do, not saying some people do, but the average person influencer. These are people who are just average people who happen to catch the algorithms and become a big influencer figure. Now, when you look at celebrities, that's totally different. You can reach the stratosphere because you have so much there. But Meghan Markle is still technically in that bubble. So I don't see her growing much beyond where she initially was. Yes, she may get 10, maybe at the most 20 million followers. The problem is, is that if brands sign her, what happens when, oh, whoopsie doopsie, you have Meghan Markle as your spokesperson and then you get a massive negative backlash from it. What I thought was really interesting is in the last video I did, I was researching the USO tour Meghan did and I came across the video from the USO with that awkward singing Christmas incident. And what was interesting is that they had turned the comments off of that. That'll be every single company that signs Meghan Markle. They will have to turn the comments off. They'll have to react to people negatively really reacting to them. And we've seen in this consumer economy, people reaching out and reacting to things like the Budweiser campaign, other things, Target, that have had massive backlashes for offending certain segments of the population. And this has happened in the reverse too, but those two have been the most incidents because usually conservatives, they say, are more, not really wishy-washy, but they're like, okay, you did something I don't like, but everybody does something I don't like, so I'm just gonna still shop there. But that they actually had this massive negative reaction, especially for Budweiser. I feel like, oh, I guess this can go wrong, because I thought this segment couldn't be offended, and, and they, they were deeply offended, and they reacted. And so this will change, I think, how brands operate when it comes to signing people like Meghan Markle. So I really think at the end of the day, this is a fool's errand for Meghan, and she'll once again, be middling, but not this massive success, being able to court millions of dollars per post. And unfortunately, once again, her own PR will set her up for failure. And she'll look again like a failure. You could say that this propping up saying they'll have a billion dollar empire, they failed. They totally failed at that. Now this may happen again. I just don't understand why just putting something out there again and again, hoping you get that is, is a smart strategy. I don't think it really is. And another interesting news, and this is something I've just always had a personal opinion on, is that Megan's mother, Doria, went to a recent event where Kris Jenner and Kim Kardashian were, and she got her picture with them. She also got her picture with a couple of other people. Now, what I find interesting here is that I've always heard people say they like Doria a lot. She seems so even keel and so much better than her daughter. But my always thought has been is that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Perhaps the only reason Megan is in a relationship with her mother is because her mother sees her relationship with her daughter as a benefit to her, just like Megan saw the royal family as a benefit to her. So in this instance, Doria got invited to a party she never would have been invited to otherwise. And I will also say she wore a J. Crew dress. Considering the people there, those little she might have tried to find something a bit better. Granted, Megan has millions and millions of dollars, so she could probably have helped her for such a big event where she was photographed. But I think the thing here is, is that Megan Markle and her mom, I think, are both rather shallow people. When you see this wedding and that none of the family were there, Megan's mom had to have a part in that. And I think Megan's mom clings to Megan because 
It's beneficial to her financially, just like it's beneficial to Megan financially to be part of the Royals. And so I think personally, I've never been a big fan of Doria and I think she's just using this opportunity, much like her daughter has, to basically get a step up when it comes to the upper echelon of Hollywood. I found that so interesting and just really did sort of prove my theory because that Megan's mom is the only person in her life, I think is really, really telling about who her mom truly is. And I think she was more than happy to indulge Megan's whims because if Megan is on top, Doria can ride her coattails to it. And so I'm sure there were a lot of things that Doria and Megan have not told Harry about their lives. Speaking of him, he was also recently seen exiting from the gym in a People Magazine exclusive. I'm like, it's not really an exclusive. Man leaves gym. I don't find that so all that interesting. But again, it goes to this whole thing where Harry and Meghan are really trying to prop themselves up, or especially Meghan, as influencers. And the sad thing is, is that it's an exceptionally shallow existence in some way, especially what Harry and Meghan could have had. Now you could say I'm an influencer, but I feel like I, I try to educate too, so I feel like that's a little bit different. It's somewhat in the same vein. But Meghan Markle could have been giving to charity. She could have been going on foreign tours. She could have been meeting dignitaries. She could have been a diplomat. All these sorts of things through the royal family. Instead, she chose a life of a bare basic influencer. And I can't think of something that more reflects shallowness than that. When you could have had this immense connection to history, tradition, so many things, and yet you choose influencing. Man alive, I don't understand it, but I think it does make Megan the Duchess of Shallow. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Meghan Markle being a rather shallow person. I'd love to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.